Well, tensions are escalating in West Asia. The leader of Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, has issued a renewed chilling warning to Israel. The leader of Lebanon's Iran-backed group says that Tehran's retaliation is inevitable and that the suspected Israeli attack on the Iranian embassy in Syria was a turning point. The warnings has put Israel and its longtime ally, the U.S., on high alert. According to reports, the U.S. preparing or the U.S. is preparing for a possible attack by Iran targeting Israeli or American assets in the region. At the same time, Israel has also increased its security alert to the highest level. According to reports again, Israel has initiated an urgent evacuation of its consulates. The precautionary measure includes relocating some Israeli diplomatic representatives to safer locations and advising against the organization of public events. The decision taken by U.S. and Israel comes on the backdrop of a written message where Iran has asked the U.S. to step aside if it doesn't want any war to get dragged or into Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's trap as the country prepares a response to a suspected Israeli attack on its consulate in Syria. While Hezbollah, its main proxy in West Asia, has warned that Israel or has warned Israel that it is prepared for war. In an address to supporters to mark Al-Quds Day, the militant group's leader said the matter of violating Iranian sovereignty is above all political differences. He says they support Iran's right to punish Israel, while also stating that a response was coming. The issue of the Iranian consulate is a turning point in the events that occurred from October 7th till today. Be certain, be sure, that the Iranian response to the targeting of consulate in Damascus is definitely coming against Israel. The Hezbollah chief is not alone in issuing a warning to Israel. Iran, too, had vowed to take a revenge. Tehran says their response to the attack will be decisive. This failure of the Israeli regime in Gaza will definitely continue as well as these desperate efforts like what they did in Syria, of course. They will be slapped for this action. All right, let's talk about what is happening in West Asia. And joining us now is retired Colonel David B. Desroches, who is an associate professor at the Near East South Asia Center for Security Studies. Is now joining us live from Washington, D.C. Colonel David, good to see you. We've seen what uh, Iran has said and we've seen what Hezbollah has said. What does this mean for Israel going forward? Because uh, the war now seems to be deviating cause. Well, it's, I think it's actually a distraction. Um, you know, Israel has uh, carried out actions against IRGC personnel uh, and Iranian leaders for a long time. They assassinated the head of Iran's nuclear program in Tehran. They stole Iran's uh, nuclear archives out of Tehran. Um, you know, so this, you know, given the fact, you know, the embassy is sovereign Iranian territory. But Israel has been acting in sovereign Iranian territory for decades. So I think this is more uh, Iranian chest beating trying to capitalize on the Gaza war, but also distract from the fact that, you know, you've had a blast by um, uh, Islamic State that killed over 100 people in Kerman in the last few months. Uh, just the last few days, 16 revolutionary guards were killed by uh, Baluch separatists in eastern Iran. And, you know, can't forget in the last month, uh, Iran launched a missile strike against Pakistan. Pakistan responded with an airstrike. So there's a lot of conflict in Iran. But the one thing that unites the Iranian people is a dislike for Israel. So I think there's an element of deception or misdirection here. Hello, David. We've seen the U.S. has issued a red alert. Also, Israel has mm -hmm. issued the same red alert. Um, Hezbollah says and Iran say that uh, the response or their responses will be inevitable and decisive. What should we expect? I, I think we'll expect something inevitable but not decisive. So I think uh, what um, Iran's MO in the past has been to strike uh, isolated facilities overseas uh, you know, outside of the Middle East that are either Israeli diplomatic facilities or uh, Jewish uh, centers. 
So, um, you know, the Iranian regime doesn't make a distinction between the Jewish religion and uh, the Israeli state. So their greatest uh, success overseas was against the Jewish Community Center in Buenos Aires. So I think they're going to try and replicate something like that. Hezbollah, on the other hand, their role uh, assigned to them by Iran uh, is to serve as a break on Israeli action uh, to remind the Israelis of their large missile inventory and potentially restrain uh, Israeli responses directly against Iran. Colonel David, finally, what does this conflict mean for West Asia? What effect will it have on the region? Well, it, it has the potential of widening the conflict, and we've seen that, you know, the Biden administration has been very, very measured in its response to the attacks on uh, U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria um, and and in Yemen, um, that the, the response has been very, very limited and narrow, uh, and only rarely have um, senior leaders of various Iranian uh, uh, aligned militias been attacked. I think that there's a possibility here that because Iranian pride is damaged, they might uh, attack something that's more significant that then re requires an American response that then will require an Iranian response. So the fear is that this might be the start of a um, inevitable cycle uh, upward of response that expands and response that expands. But it's important to note that, you know, the, the, the proximate cause of this was an attack against Revolutionary Guard officers and the attack in Damascus while it was on Iranian soil. Uh, it didn't kill the Iranian ambassador. And as far as I know, it didn't kill any diplomats. It only killed Revolutionary Guard officers. So this is not that different from other Israeli attacks. The difference is Iranian pride. All right. I've been talking to an associate professor at the Near East South Asia Center for Security Studies, retired Colonel David B. Desroches. As always, thank you very much for your insights and for talking to us today. It's an honor. For all the latest news, download the We On app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.